Adjuster Checkup. Welcome to the Adjuster Checkup. Let me get my view together so I can see what's going on. Hello. Welcome, 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 everyone. Welcome to the Adjuster Checkup. All right. Going live. I apologize. I started a few minutes late um, because I was checking on my settings. Um, I did something different last week and I don't know exactly what that was. And as a result, I'm usually able to take these live videos, download them, and then put them on edit and put them on our YouTube page. But whatever I did different in the settings last week, I was not able to download last week's video. And as a result, it has not yet posted to YouTube. So if you're waiting on me to do last week's video and post it on YouTube, the edited version, I apologize. So what I'm probably going to have to do is embed the very raw one hour version of the adjuster checkup so i apologize i don't know what happened but let's move forward let me get my headphones on if you can hear me please i just got to make sure that you can hear me please put a comment in our uh please put a comment in the comments how about that <laughs> if i'm coming in loud and clear because we've had all kinds of little hiccups and I'm still getting the hang of this. I'm new to the podcast thing. So <sighs> welcome to the Adjuster Checkup. Let's get to our opening music. Welcome, everybody. Happy Wednesday. All right. <laughs> It's my, and listen, this is all we got until I learn how to program some music into this little soundboard. This is what we get, okay? As corny as it is, this is what we're getting, okay? We're going to work with it until we can make it better. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be done. Okay, welcome to the Adjuster Checkup. So the topic of discussion that we're going to talk about this evening is these insurance conferences. Like you're, you're seeing a lot of them. You see them advertised. You might be getting them in the emails and you're probably trying to figure out. And I was just talking, I got this idea actually just today talking to one of our adjusters, Miss Artevia Smith. Thank you, Miss Artevia for giving me um, an idea to do this subject. How about a round of applause for Miss Artevia? So the thing is, is which one should you even go to a claims conference? What can it do for you, right? Is it really worth your money? Because most of the most, excuse me, of these conferences are not cheap. They're not cheap. You got to pay for the conference registration. You've got to get there. You've got to stay at a hotel while you're there. You've got to eat, and you got to get back home. So if you're gonna put that much as far as investing into your career, why should you do it? Is it worth it? Okay. I will tell you this. Now, for those who don't know me, this may be your first time looking at this face and getting to know me. My name is Charlene Hoskins. I am the founder, president, and CEO of TPAS LLC, a property and casualty education firm. And we focus specifically right now on the education of the insurance claims professional, the adjuster. All right. So I'll say this. I've been doing this 18 years. When I first started and through the entire stint of me chasing down claims and storms, no. I did not go to insurance claims conferences. I didn't know anything about them. I did not see the value in them. And so I was just head down, grinding on alone. Um, if I knew then what I know now, I would have definitely invested in going to the insurance claim conferences. So there's a lot of them out there. Again, depending on what area, what discipline that you're going into in insurance, um depends on which one you want to go to so there are insurance conferences specifically for people who are working in health insurance specifically for people who are working in life insurance and you know those licensing processes are totally different than the property and casualty or all lines claims adjuster right so we're going to speak specifically in our wheelhouse i cannot comment on life insurance or health insurance conferences if you're looking for that i apologize i will not be able to give you that information uh, today. So what I'm going to speak on specifically is um, what affects property and casualty. And I'll 
tell you the ones that are popular for adjusters, the ones that are popular to the industry in general, um, and some of the ones that, you know, and of course, what to hone in on, right? Like, should you go? We'll answer the very first question. What are they? Should you go to them? Is it worth your money to do that? Um, then we're going to talk about um, the different ones that are out there and which, which ones should you target and which ones do you get more bang for your buck? All right, so should you go? You can already tell from me telling you about the fact that I didn't go and that I wish I would have known and would have gone. I'm going to say yes, I do believe that if you go to the right insurance conference, it can be beneficial for you. It can help you to elevate your career. It can also increase your, depending on the courses and classes that they have, it can increase your skill set and, you know, make you a better adjuster, most definitely. Um, why should you do that? <laughs> because, it, because of exactly the list that I just gave you. The right insurance conference, one, they should have a variety of education tracks, right? Or they may call them education sessions. At every insurance conference, there should be a multitude of different classes that you can attend, usually about an hour, hour and a half, some are longer. Most of them are within that range. You pick a subject that you like, right? You look at the education track and you say, okay, yeah, I want to learn more about auto. I want to learn more about, you know, I don't know, 18 wheelers, if that's a class, right? I want to learn more about insurance fraud and how to identify it and how to, you know, have a defense up against it. Um, and you'll pick that. And of course, you're going to probably pick an education track that comes with a level of continuing education credits. Yeah, you want CEs while you're also learning, right? And then from there, um, you take the class, you put your information in, they give you your CE credits, this conference is done, you've done that for a multitude of classes, and usually by the end of these conferences, if you go to the right one, then you will end up um, most likely having all of your required CEs for your state. Because most of these insurance conferences, the CEs that they do offer for these courses will be for multiple states, okay? <clears throat> so another benefit to attending these insurance conferences is the networking opportunities, right? So not only are you getting to learn something new, you get a certificate of completion that gets essentially associated with that and CEs, so it takes care of that. You're going to be able to network. There's usually going to be, um, if you're not networking with the individuals in your class, in the class, because the classes are short, you might not be able to um, form lasting relationships through the classes. You definitely want um, to go to the different events. There's usually some kind of after hours event, usually at these conferences, and usually that's happening every day, some kind of, and they do that on purpose. They create events to foster environments for networking, all right, and cultivate networking environments. So yes, you want to do that. Um, that's actually a really great benefit. And for some of these conferences, it's like insurance adjuster spring break. <laughs> so you have a lot of fun. And you get to let your hair down a little bit, not too much now because you're still around, you know, it's still the industry. Not too much, but a little bit, you get to let your hair down, all right? So I'm just making sure I don't have any comments. I don't. Okay, good. I can keep going. No questions. No comments. All right. So um, let's talk about, because I'm watching my time and I'm trying to keep this within this hour. Excuse me, these 30 minutes. Look at that. I'm already saying an hour. Um, I will also say, okay, what, what conferences are out there? And I'm getting a lot of questions. Now, you know I'm the people's champ over here all right you know you already know who my demographic my customer base is and it is people that look like me people who are of color people who have color on their skin they are black they are brown they are melanated in some shape form or fashion got a little tint a little tan a little something i've got uh latinos that i have helped to train and mentor um as far as well as you know the, from the asian spectrum koreans and Chinese, Japanese, so forth and so on. Of course, black people like myself, Afro-American or people of African descent or who are descendants, <laughs> right? So anywho, 
Um, I'm going to speak to you specifically. I'm saying that because I'm going to say, I'm going to speak to you specifically. If this is not for you, I am not the podcast person for you. Move on. All right. You're not going to make me change what I'm doing. I'm going to do what I'm doing for who I do it for. All right. So with that said, um, I get in, I'm, it's, I know this is going to blow back on me. I don't care. I said what I said. Um, I get, I'm getting a lot and I've, I addressed it very briefly in a previous podcast, but I get a lot of questions about one particular conference specifically. I'm going to go ahead and mention them last because I might go on a stoke box, but I'll talk about the ones that you might have heard of. You might have heard of, there is an association called the National, hold on, I just looked it up. Hold on, you all. I know the name of it, but I had to, I know the acronym. It's the National Association of Independent Insurance Adjusters. Okay. That is an organization and it does have a, I think they have regional conferences as well as national conferences. And I will say this, and I'm going to give you my opinion based on uh, interaction with some of these organizations, not necessarily interactions that led, that compelled me to attend one of their conferences. So I will say, I don't know enough about NAIIA, which is the National Independent, excuse me, the National Association of Independent Insurance Adjusters. That sounds like an organization that's very specific to what we do, right? Most of us are independent claims adjusters. Most of you who are watching this podcast, either you are an independent claims adjusters or you're, or you're looking to become an independent claim adjuster. And so um, I know I've checked out this organization. I have seen them set up booths at some conferences that I've been to. When I have interacted with the individual who was behind the, the, the booth at the booth, I got nothing but positive vibes. However, I don't have enough feedback to let you know if their conferences are worth your while. Um, they do have, it looks like, um, it looks like they, their national conference happens at around, um, so right now they just had a mid-states regional meeting um, just this month, earlier this, really just last week, okay? They just had that. Um, I haven't heard much about this organization. It may be that they are still growing. I think they've been around for a while, though, but maybe they're growing a little slowly, and that's okay, right? Um I don't know what they really have to, to offer. It looks like they have had 85 conferences. 85. Because it looks like the one that they advertised for, excuse me, 80, 86, the one they advertised for last year, 2022, was their 85th national conference. I'm just, yeah, 85 conferences, and I've been in the industry 18 years, and I ain't heard of it. But it's okay. It's okay. May not be for us. May not be for us. Uh, just keep in mind, you know, um, and listen, for everything that I'm about to say on this level, if you are an organization that's watching this and you feel offended, you feel a certain kind of way, and you're feeling a little sensitive with what I got to say, here's the thing. We understand what it is because we understand that the insurance industry as a whole has been a white male dominated industry for literally hundreds of years. You don't like the history, you embarrassed by it. I don't know what to tell you. You know, you got to have a, a, you got to go into meditation or something and and figure out how you're going to find peace with the fact that your great, 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 great granddaddy owned a couple of our great, 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 great grandmamas. All right. So any who's. But it is what it is. It's the history. It, it's how, and that's one of the reasons why, like I've always, I always say the insurance, the insurance industry is in the midst of a talent gap crisis right now. You can't find the people because it has been a white male dominated industry. And in being so, you have kept this industry close to your te- chest. Now all y'all want to leave and retire and you don't have the talent to replace you. You're not promoting from within, whatever, whatever. We did that last week. I'm not doing it again this week. So for the National Association of Independent Insurance Claims Adjusters, I would say they need more outreach. We don't know you're here. I had to go find you. And the only reason I knew you existed is because of my personal attendance of different conferences where I've seen you having booths there. And I've talked to the people at your booths, which seemed very nice. 
But when I go to your website and I look at your pictures, I am not seeing variety. You're not looking like an assorted box of crayons, okay? You're looking real colorless in these streets. It is what it is. It's the facts. Do better. Um, the next uh, so, uh, organization I want to talk about who has insurance conferences is RIMS. R-I-M. R I, I do not know my military alphabet. Forgive me. R is in Robert. I is in Isaac. M is in Mary. S is S is in Saint. Rims. Go and Google Rims. Okay, Rims does have a national conference every single year. And what I it's now I have not personally gone to a Rims conference. Okay, let me. I'm I'm telling you all the truth. I have not personally gone. I have been invited. I have been encouraged to go. I am going to go one of these years. Maybe next year I'll go. Um, what I have, what my impression of RIMS is, is that RIMS is a big organization. They're a big deal. Um, I think they call their conference Risk World. So it's everything involved in insurance risk, right? Um, and they even have a Canadian conference that they do. RIMS is a pretty big deal. Uh, I, I believe RIMS is an international kind of conference, insurance conference organization, and they are a big deal. What my impression is of RIMS is that the individuals who are like in the executive C-suite are and the, um, you know, people that sign off on, on certain contracts and when you want to make certain deals and get and get in front of certain CEOs that RIMS would be the conference to attend. So if you do not have an auxiliary business that services the insurance industry, i.e. your own adjusting firm or something of the sort, your own mitigation company, RIMS may not be for the brand new adjuster. Okay. RIMS may be for somebody. That's why they keep saying, you got to get there. We got to, are we going to see you at RIMS? That's what they be asking me. All right. So RIMS is really on that level. Okay. On more of the executive managerial level of insurance professionals meeting up based up this is just my opinion i could be completely wrong please verify all right um another organization that i want to talk i'm gonna go ahead and get to it another organization i want to talk about um that does have insurance claims conference it has an initial very very similar to the national association of independent insurance adjusters but there's an extra A in there. Instead of it being N-A-I-I-A, it's N-A-A-I-A, <laughs> which is, and I think I talked to you guys about this. I talked about joining. And as I dive more, um, I am a part of the organization. And as I be, get, get involved more and have more information, I will definitely share that on, uh, share that information with you. It's called, we call it NAIA, N-A-A-I-A. -I -I. NAAIA, which is the National African American Insurance Association. Now, that sounds specific to us, doesn't it? And they do have a conference every year. Unfortunately, the conference that they had this year, which happened just last week or week before last, whatever. Unfortunately, I was in Jamaica, so I was not going to be able to attend. But hopefully, as long as God says the same, I will be at the NIA convention, national convention or insurance conference, I should say next year okay um from what i have heard i've heard positive reviews it's a good um convention to go to now what i suggest going to that convention if you're a new adjuster and you're looking to um, connect with independent adjusting firms and get a gig no i would not but if you are looking to um, especially as an adjuster of color, if you are looking to connect with like-minded individuals in your industry and network, because you never know, maybe one day you'll go staff. I don't know. Then I would definitely recommend attending a NIA convention just to see the representation, right? Because representation does matter. And I do think that when you see um, us in certain um, roles of leadership, in this industry, I think it is a mind shifter. I think it is a game changer. All right. Um, I'm going to get to them. <laughs> I'm going to get to them, but I said I'm going to choose them. I'm going to save the best for last. Okay. 
the next organization that I want to talk about, I'm going through these pretty quickly, right? Okay, good. The next organization I want to talk about is um, NACA. Now, this is also supposedly an adjuster specific um, co uh, organization and conference. Uh, NACA, NACA, N A C A, stands for the National Association of, of Catastrophe Adjusters. I had to think about it. The National Association of Catastrophe Adjusters is NACA. Um, I went to a NACA conference. I'm going to tell you the honest to God truth. If this comes back to NACA, I ain't do what you did it, but I am going to tell the truth. Um, we joined NACA, our independent adjusting firm, contest adjuster team. We joined NACA. We paid the money. I can't remember how much it was, a couple hundred dollars for an IA firm to join. We joined and we never received a welcome packet. One. That was strike one for us. So we thought about it. We went a whole year, never got a welcome package, never got an email, not a welcome email, not a nothing. Called, left messages. Hey, we just joined. Did you get us? Did you get in? Are we in? Okay, we in. Got to talk to somebody on the phone, told them, never got a welcome package. Oh, okay, we can send that message. Oh, we never got it. Messages supposedly went, voicemails were left, never got it. So then we thought, okay, we're going to give them another chance. We're going to do this another year. And this time, we're going to actually go to the conference. We're going to let them see our face. We're going to meet them, show our personality, let that shine. And we did that. And we even did a contents education course, personal property contents education course, at the NACA convention back in 20, was that 2020? I want to say 2020. I can't remember because now COVID got me all thrown off on years. I can't remember if it was before or after COVID. It might have been after COVID. It was after COVID. I remember masks. So it might have been 2022. Okay. So that might have been last year. Went to the conference. Really got to meet a lot of really great people. Um, Mom even signed up for some of the committees like membership, outreach committee, da 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 other than being on that list and getting maybe one email, and I think they might have had one meeting. There was nothing else after that. So um, after the end, we even spoke with somebody personally after we signed up for the second year and said, hey, never got a welcome package. Here we are. Hi, nice to meet you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, supposedly talk to the person who sends out the welcome packages, welcome what letters or whatever. Never heard from them. Never got that welcome package surprising um one thing that i noticed in the feedback that i've been getting from a lot of my adjusters even who attended the conference before me and attended the conference after me um one of the things that we did while we were there we did not see a lot of adjusters of color and when we did we really tried to just as individuals introduce ourselves hey how you doing when we sat down for the little lunches and little breaks come sit with us sit at our table you know yada 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 it was it was, it was, it was a good time when we were there um unfortunately <laughs> that's pretty much where it started and it ended um me personally for the cost of the conference the location being in nevada in vegas i think they're moving it to reno next year it's a very expensive place to have a conference um one of the things that i noticed right off the bat was there was a that i was not informed of did not know of until the day i got in that they did some kind of golf tournament the day before I'm great on activities for these conferences, but please keep in mind when you guys are hosting these things, and I get it, you want the golf course because you try to get the executives in and make the deals. We know great deals are made on golf courses. We know that. But just please keep in mind, you are the catastrophe adjusters, uh, supposed association. You're supposed to be here for the adjuster, and, you're, and adjusters come in every color and every race and every creed. And I don't think that a golf tournament was very inclusive. As far as an activity is concerned and that was the only pre-conference activity i don't know if there was a post-conference activity or not um so i i didn't me personally i did not um i ain't like it uh i didn't think there was enough diversity and inclusion in it most definitely and one thing that i noticed there was only like one or of uh, there wasn't a lot of variety with the education tracks 
And then the education tracks that were offered, a lot of them were taught by the same company. That's fine. Get your, get your thing. And I said, boy, they got their investment in. Okay. They're getting their money's worth. But that was, that was one of the things. And the exhibit floor seemed to be lacking. Now that was, again, this was right after COVID. Maybe it's going to be bigger. You know, it's taking us a while to get back outside. So I tried to take all of that into account, give them grace. However, when it came to going back, I will not go back. When it comes to adjusters recommending, asking me, would I recommend it? I do not. I'm just going to be honest. It is what it is. Anywho, spend your money. But here's my thing. That's my experience. Your experience may very well be different. Don't take my word for it. Have your experience for yourself. Have your experience for yourself. Um, the next conference I want to talk about, and I, it'll probably be the last conference I want to talk about, is um, PL, PLRB. If you don't know what PLRB is, PLRB stands for the Property Liability Resource Bureau. Um, I might sound a little biased when I talk about PLRB because I really like that conference. Um, the conference that I'm speaking of, because they have several every year, they have about five of them every year. They have two national ones and I think three regional ones. And now they're doing a like a tech type of conference, technology conference um, for PLRB. And that's P as in Paul, P as in property, L as in loss or no L as in liability, <laughs> property liability, R as in resource, B as in bureau. If you want to go to their website, it's PLRB.org. PLRB, I really like. So we started going to PLRB back in 2018. Um, started off, didn't know no one, but felt very welcome. Um, there was there was more diversity and inclusion that I had thus seen. And actually the person who put us on to uh, suggested that we go to PLRB to expand our horizons was actually a brother. All right. Shout out to LeBron James. And so when we went, um, we really liked it. And one of the things that we did, by the time we signed up, it was too late to suggest an education track, like for content. But what happened was at the very, very last minute, this is going to be a little bit of a story time at the very last minute, not the very last minute, but when we were getting close to the conference, we, there was an e of email blast that went out that said hey we're doing this plrb industry insights it's like a ted talk you'll talk for like 15 minutes about a subject of your choice if you would like to be considered you know send us a little video with you and what you want to talk about and so i was like ma you should do it so <laughs> my mother my myself and uh my little cousin <laughs> my little cousin who was my assistant at the time, Angelo Smiley. Shout out to my little cousin. Love you, Lolo. Um, we did a video. It took us, it took us so many takes, but we finally got the video done. <laughs> we did this video, <laughs> really makeshift. I, I wonder if we still got that original video. We should put that out there as a blooper. But we did this video. I'm about to sneeze. And they liked it. And so they said they picked Ma to do the industry insight, which is like a TED talk, but it's like 15 minutes. So they did it. So that was the first thing we did is we just attended it. She did the industry insights um, and we attended the conference as guests. So we were, I, I was like, man, I really like that. That was really cool. So then we went back the next year and we made some good contacts. We networked, we went back the next year and then the next year, she had suggested to do the education track for content. They accepted that. And I suggested to do the industry insight. And I picked the subject and I recorded a video and they picked me for the industry insight. So I did an industry insight the next year over 2019. And then she did the content training her and they picked a co uh, presenter <clears throat> with her because they was like, well, because you guys are from the same company, we really want you to co-present with somebody else somebody you don't know so that's what we did and it went off well and then 2020 we were going to present again um she was going to do contents again and you know what happened in 2020 because the conference for the the conference i'm talking about they did that they do they do in the spring and it's called the uh claims conference it's called the plrb claims conference and insurance 
Services Expo. So 2020 came and went and you know how that went. So I think we just got back to presenting live uh, in person again back in 20, was it last year? Was last year the first? Oh, 2022, we did a regional conference. And at the regional conference, I presented for the first time. Mom didn't present at the regional. I presented on, um, I should know this, reservation of rights versus denial letters. And then this last one that they just had at the beginning of this year is usually around mid to the end of March is usually the dates that one we both got to present both of our classes so she presented on personal property contents i presented on reservation of rights versus denial letters and uh and we were also asked to be keynote speakers for the lunch on the last day so we closed the conference out and and we actually kind of opened the conference because they invited us this year to just pop our heads in they have a new attendee type of orientation so anybody who's ever gone to plrb for the very first time there's an early meeting like on the first day and um and they have new attendees go to this meeting or they suggest for it and so they told us you guys should stop by and we thought that would be cool because we've never actually done that you know and so we didn't know he was going to be put on the spot we walk in we pop our head in we're trying to sit at the back of the room and just peep game and <laughs> they were like, as a matter of fact, Charlene, damn it, why not come on up to the front and talk to the people, tell the people. Boy, we just, I just say by the time we got done talking, we had a standing ovation. That was, okay, I said, I might as well start getting used to these standing ovations. And every time we get done doing our, some kind of presentation, people want to clap. And I love it. Okay, I'm here for all of it. The Leo in me is like, give me all of that. <laughs> So anyhow, <laughs> uh, so I, I, this is why I recommend PLRB uh, Claims Conference, their Spring Claims Conference and Insurance Services Expo above all others. And I recommend this for really if you are, if, if you haven't attended a conference before in this industry and you're, whether you're new or old, I think this is a good conference to wet your feet. If you're new, I think it's great for a number of things. One, tons of educational tracks, lots of variety. Everything from property to casualty, liability, auto, uh, heavy equipment, and the list goes on. I mean, it's a lot of different variety. I mean, in, in different subjects, some stuff is like there was a, course they had on women in insurance right um there was a lot of different things that they talk about and i like that a lot of variety of presenters a lot of variety of the education that you're going to be getting there's usually a flood class so if you do have four years um if you have been licensed for in, in the industry for four years um you can get your flood certification at the plrb conference as well of course that'll take up your whole day because you know Flood certification is like eight hours, but you can do that. Um, there's a lot they feed you. If y'all ain't noticed, listen, I got to have my meals. I ain't even gonna lie. Don't nobody like a bone but a dog, baby. I got to eat. I get breakfast. I get lunch. And I usually get some kind of after, you know, end of the day snack or derb dinner like deal. Plus you have. The companies who support the industry or who service the industry, they usually have some kind of after party with food, okay? <laughs> Finger food usually, all right? Got to eat. You got to feed me. If this is an expensive venture. You're paying for the conference. You're paying for your hotels. These hotels are usually somewhere around 250 to 300 a night. You're paying for that for two, three nights, whatever the case may be, right? I keep, well, whatever. So you it's an investment now keep in mind though whatever you spend especially if you're an independent whatever you spend in this industry right 
to network, to, to increase your skill set. Every class, every event, if you drive to the event, if you fly to the event, the cost of the event, all of this is a tax write-off, you all. Keep your receipts. The food you purchase while you're at the event, the, the plane, paying for your bags on the plane, all of this is a tax write-off. You're going to a business event, and you're a business owner because you're an independent adjuster. You're an independent contractor. All of this is a tax write-off. You'll get it back, all right? So don't be afraid to invest in yourself. This is important. Are you going to stick with this industry or not? And how are you going to make the industry work for you to get to the goal financially that you're trying to get to? You're going to have to invest in yourself. It's not always going to be free. It can't be. It just can't be. We make too much money for everybody in this industry when you do start working and getting your deployment opportunity. We make it too much money for stuff to be looking for free stuff, okay? All right. Um, the game is sold, not told. All right. Any hoots. <laughs> um, so, variety of education tracks, food. Usually, the locations are absolutely beautiful. And you do usually have time to do be a be go off the beaten path be a little tourist for a minute so forth and so it's usually in a central location in whatever city it's located in so you you can see other things that are out there okay so you can choose it like a little vacation like i said for me plrb is like a just a spring break okay uh <laughs> um another thing that i think is very beneficial to plrb aside from others is the exposition floor so on the exposition floor will be companies that service. Remember, it's called the Claims Conference. So again, the name of it, specific to claims handling. Claims Conference and Insurance Services Expo. That expo part, oh, that's big, baby. That's major. So on the ex exhibition floor, you have companies who have paid for booths to be on display for you to go to. And it's and what who they're targeting. They're targeting to two groups of folks they're targeting the insurance uh staff adjusters who may need their particular service and they would want to them to be used right by said staff hey use us here's our business card and we do mitigation services use our business cards we are litigation attorneys for carriers hey here's our business cards we um specialize in appraising artwork or jewelry whatever the case may be right but then you also have the main player who services the insurance industry which is the independent adjusting well one of the main players which is the independent adjusting firms so you're going to be able to be face to face and a lot of times the the individuals that are at the booths for the ia firms are usually somebody in an higher up position okay it's usually going to be the person that's over claims or over recruitment, over HR, over training, something like that. And so those are the individuals that you want to be in front of. Take your resume with you. Be ready to get to that exhibition floor and hit every single IA firm. Let them know what you're doing. Let them know what you've been up to as far as certifications. Make sure that it's all on your resume, whether you do or don't have um, claims handling experience, right? Put it out there. And then network, talk to them, be yourself, right? Yes, it's a professional environment, but relax, right? They're going to be there for what? On, on, I think the exhibit floor is open for like two of the three days because PLRB next year is going to be March 17th through the 20th um, at, in Boston. So they looking to relax too. They ain't trying to have a heavy conversation either. And a lot of them, uh, I know some firms will bring their computers and stuff and they'll enter you on their roster right there on the spot. I have seen adjusters get assigned jobs while they're on the exhibition floor. Okay. So because of that, you want to make sure that you're prepared. I saw, and this was a field guy. I was just randomly eavesdropping in the area. You know what I'd be doing. And so I heard the conversation and dude was like, what you do? Oh, you can do that too. Oh, so you inspect blah, blah, whatever. Oh, what state you in? Oh, we need somebody over there. What should, we ain't got nobody. When you going back? Oh, as soon as this is over, can we go ahead and send this claim over to you? You can handle it when you get back. Boom, job, end, right? 
So keep that in mind. You never know where these opportunities are going to come from. And again, I'm just gaming you on another angle to get in front of these companies, to, to stand out, to shine amongst the tens of thousands of people that they have on their rosters. Okay. And you're going to have a good time and you might meet some celebrities. So for instance, uh, this past year, cro uh, cross country, cross country went over and beyond the call of duty and they brought in uh, to bring attention to their booth. I guess they brought in Roy Jones, Jr. The boxer, uh, Rick, uh, Mike Tyson, the Mike Tyson and Ric Flair. And if y'all look on my personal Facebook page, I put pictures on, on, uh, with me all, with all three of them. Yeah, I got to meet Roy Jones Jr., Mike Tyson, and Ric Flair. And, of course, I wooed. You know I woo! You know I wooed Ric Flair, right? You know he wooed me back, right? You know when I left the booth, he wooed me. He initiated the woo. Okay. <laughs> and then, you know, because nobody had wooed him until I got up there. I'm like, why are y'all being, this is Ric mother effing Flair. I literally said that loud as hell. And I was like, ah! <laughs> and Rick appreciated it. All right. Mike Tyson, I made a joke with him. That man's still strong as hell. Okay. Because he went to laugh and he, he tapped me on my back. I was like, oh, Lord, that man's strong. <laughs> so that's the benefit of that's going to be the conference I'm going to pump up. Until I see something different with these other conferences, I'm pumping up all day long PLRB Claims Conference and Insurance Services Expo, okay? Go there. You're going to meet all the big IA players that you need to meet. You can get on the rosters right away. You might even be able to get an opportunity right away just depending on what they got going on when you get there. Mind you, this conference is going on in the spring. And what happens in the spring? Tornado and hail, right? So get there. And then being able to network with other like-minded adjusters. It's going to be a good time. Most of the time, somebody like a, a Serve Pro or a BMS Cat, Black Men Mooring is BMS, um, or like a Bell for they'll have like after parties. And then you get all dressed up. You go to the after party. You have a good time. You eat some more. You drink some more. It'd be open bar. Don't go too crazy now. All things in moderation. It still work technically. And then usually folks are still hanging out after that, after the bar, talking, ordering food, networking. Who are you? Who are you? What do you do? Da, 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 da. So you get to connect with other adjusters, staff and independent alike. You get to connect with um, the people that matter who are decision makers at these IA firms, right? You get to have a good time. You get to learn. You get fed. You get your CEs. What 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 else could you want from a conference? All right. So with that said, I'm gonna go, y'all. I don't think I have any questions. I think y'all left me alone today. Either that or I answered all y'all questions. But I I appreciate you. I thank you for taking the time for sitting down with me, letting me get them extra minutes in. That's my my two cents on the uh, conference circuit for now. Um, if you guys want, when we go back next year, I'll try to do a little more video, maybe walk around, do some interviewing with some people and whoever will talk to me, of course, and see and see what else is out there, see what else what we can do um, and give you guys the stilo. Maybe I'll do a whole conference circuit run and I'll give you like full on reviews. Maybe we'll try that. We'll see. We'll see. Um, but there's just a lot of the, the whole point of the adjuster checkup is to give you what you may need out here in this industry because when 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 my mother and i got started with this we didn't know anything about anything we only knew of one ia firm that was pilot that's who we started off with and that was it we had to eavesdrop on conversations we had to network we had to really hustle to get the rest of these other firms names uh, learn what certifications and what else was needed, what training was needed, what education was needed, what skill sets was needed. We really had to sit back and observe our industry. And the thing is, is like, you don't know what you don't know. Even with all that observation, even with 18 years in the game, there is still so much I don't know and that I could learn and will learn as time goes along. So the whole point of the adjuster checkup is to really to catch you up because this industry is changing all the time and there's always some different angle or some different thing to go by. And again, had I known about the insurance 
conference deal ahead of time as an adjuster, I would have invested my time and money into attending a few of them, right? Um, and to see what, what worked for me and what didn't work for me, if I would have known the benefits that I could get, knocking all my CE out and, you know, get, getting all this extra education, this stuff that's different that I don't see being offered by these different training companies or these different IA firms in their uh, trainings or their LMS systems and stuff like that, I would have totally been on board with it. I just didn't know anything about it. So I'm giving you all the heads up so you can have a head start, right, on different things like this, conferences, licensing, um, certifications, trying to get answer whatever questions that you need to have answered so you can avoid the pitfalls that we had coming into the industry and you can just fly. Because if you don't win, we don't win. All right? We all have to win. If one of us isn't free, none of us are free. So with that said, <laughs> If you know, you know. I thank you all for listening to me for yet another evening. I hope I have not taken up too much of your time. I hope that you can take this information and that you can learn from it and grow from it and be now more informed with your decision. If for nothing else, insurance conferences. All right. And so with that, I thank you. I appreciate you. And I will see you next week. Same place, same time, 8 p.m. Central at the Adjusted Checkup. All right, see you all later. Bye.